I know I can help trust at a certain level. It has to be in that usually covers your your high risk and mm -hmm. your high premium claims. How's that going? You know, not not quite known yet. Um, the question was about reinsurance. Whether uh, plans will continue to provide, you know, given the, the amount of money they're going to get for this basic benefits package, whether there will be reinsurance products. Um, we used to have a, we, I think we still do, but are thinking of eliminating it. In our CHIP program here in Colorado for low-income kids, we purchased reinsurance. We had have like a hundred thousand dollar limit annual limit on coverage for the kids while well, we had hardly any kids we we're spending all this money on reinsurance and hardly any children ever hit that cap um, so I don't really know the answer to whether individual plans or the plans sold in the exchange how much reinsurance is going to play in that in in the overall um, world as I mentioned earlier there is a reinsurance program that will be administered by the division of insurance to help plans that have somehow ended up with a lot of sick people. If there's a lot of adverse selection in the first couple of years of the exchange just because we don't know what's going to happen, there will be a pot of money to make those plans whole. But how the whole concept of reinsurance plays out in the end, you know, I don't know yet. Well, thank you very much. Um, follow me on Twitter. Uh, look on our government, um, healthreform.gov website if you want to stay in touch and keep information. We'll be, we're pushing out a lot of information um, and you can track what we're doing and minutes from the work groups and announcements. And um, So stay in touch and, and I'm always willing to come back if you have more questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joan. We appreciate your presentation today. I think we all learned a lot. And from judging from the questions, I think I'm, I'm so glad you were here to answer them. I did misspeak early on. I, I said that, that Joan was working with the Colorado Health Foundation along, uh, that it was, it's really the Colorado Health Institute that has housed uh, this work around exchange development. Um, there are two other people that I just want to recognize. Uh, Fire Chief Doug McBee is with us, and former State Representative Gwen Green has joined us this morning. Welcome to both of you. Um, are there, you know, any other questions? Let me say at this point that the legislature is this week going to reach about the halfway point of the session. And, um, you know, the work is progressing there. Just because of the normal scheduling and time timing of uh, the process, we're beginning to see bills signed. Uh, the governor held his first bill signing last week and signed about a half a dozen different bills. And uh, legislation is progressing. I'm hoping, we, we talked about the exchange bill today. Uh, I'm working with a representative, with a Republican representative on the House side and we are very, very close to having an exchange bill that we both agree on that um, my personal hope was that it would be in introduced by the end of this coming week. It may take a little bit longer by the time we, we have finally uh, done a little bit, little bit more venting of what we agree on. That this has been a, an incredibly well-kept secret, I think, uh, for as far as legislation goes, because you know we've, we've been negotiating for months, for several several months, and you know people are still wondering what's what's in the bill. <laughs> so so there's not been a lot of leakage, but we've had some good input from from some areas, and we're going to do a little bit more uh, vetting with with some other organizations, and hopefully it will come very soon. And once it comes that it goes through very quickly because of the agreement that we have come to um, across the houses and across the parties. So um, more, we'll tell you more about that next month when we're, we're together to see where we are. Um,